Many of you have asked me, Peter, what is a REIT? What is a real estate investment trust? You have also asked, how can I invest in them and are they profitable? Also, you asked, what are the benefits and disadvantages of investing in a REIT? And are they the right thing for me? And lastly, or is it better for me to just do my own investing rather than invest in a REIT? Hi, I'm Peter Harris with Commercial Property Advisors. I'm author of this book, Commercial Real Estate Investing for Dummies, author of my new book, Commercial Real Estate for Beginners, and I'm also a coach and mentor to many commercial real estate investors all across this great nation of ours. Thank you for joining me today for Real Estate Investment Trust for Dummies. Let's get started. Let's start here. What is a REIT? What is a real estate investment trust? Well, it all started back in 1960 uh, with Congress. Congress wanted to figure out a way that will allow the public to invest in large income producing commercial real estate. So a REIT is a company that owns and operates large income producing commercial real estate such as office buildings, apartment buildings, shopping centers, self-storage, hospitals, data centers, warehouses, industrial sites, all of the above in an effort to allow the public to invest in those type of buildings without actually owning them or going through the process of buying them. Let me share with you a quick and easy structure of how a REIT is set up, okay? All right, so let's say that we have four shopping centers, property one, two, three, and four, or four large apartment buildings, okay? It can be any of the above. So I have property one, two, three, and four, all right? And they are for sale, these four large properties. A management company, a group of people, will come by and they have a desire to purchase these four properties. So what this management team would do is they will set up a REIT along with an operating agreement that allows the public to buy shares in this company here. So this is the real estate company that's going to that's going to own these four properties, right? So the public is going to buy is going to invest in a REIT by buying shares. So remember, you will be a stockholder. So the money will come into the REIT. And as a result, the shareholders, the public, that's you, you will have a, a, minor, a majority ownership in the stock. While the management team will have a minority ownership in the stock, the public, that's you, will receive tax shelter dividends and the management team will receive dividends. So again, uh, a REIT is, uh, is a way that Congress started in 1960 to allow the public to invest in large scale commercial real estate that's income producing, right? Without going through the hassle of buying one yourself. So a REIT is a dividend paying stock. Okay, got it? All right, I'd like to move on to uh, what are the qualification rules uh, of a REIT? There are many, so let's go there. All right, let's start here. There are two basic REITs. Uh, the first one is called an equity REIT and the second one is called a mortgage REIT. An equity REIT is a REIT that actually physically uh, invests in the, in the commercial real estate property. So they actually own and operate it. A mortgage REIT invests in the loans. They make money off of the loans. Okay, so we have those two types. Let's move on to how they both qualify uh, and maintain their qualification as REITs. Number one, let me just start here. Congress designed REITs as to, 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 uh, to be similar to a mutual fund. And even though it has evolved over the years, they pretty much still look like mutual funds and operate like it. Number two, um, REITs must have a long-term outlook, a long-term investment horizon uh, uh, with the property. Number three, a REIT must invest 75% um, of its assets in real estate only, 75%. Number four, a REIT must derive 75% of its gross income from the real estate itself, okay? So it could be rental income, it can be from the mortgages, or it can be from the sale of the property, got it? 
And number five, 90% of the taxable income from a REIT must be paid out to shareholders, right? This is very important for them to maintain their status as a REIT. Uh, I guess the downside would be that a REIT cannot retain any earnings. It must pay out 90%, at least 90% to maintain its standing. That means it can't hold on to things to do, to buy other things or to um, uh, fix up the property, okay? That can be a negative. Uh, number six, um, a REIT must be uh, taxable as a corporation per the IRS. Again, the IRS um, lays out all the rules and oversees uh, the REIT qualification. Number seven, a REIT must be managed by a board of directors or a set of trustees. And number eight, um, there must be a minimum, a minimum of 100 shareholders in a REIT for it to qualify as a REIT. And lastly, no more than 70, no more than 50% of the shares are to be held by five or fewer individuals. Okay, so these are the many qualifications of a REIT. Uh, in order for it to be qualified, it must maintain this status. All right, so the next thing I want to discuss here is uh, what are the most common REITs today and how to invest in them. Let's go there next. All right, let's, let's jump into the most common REITs and how to invest with them. Let's start off with the top five REITs, the top uh, most common REITs. Uh, number one are the retail REITs. Retail REITs uh, invest in shopping malls and they comprise about 24% uh, of the overall investment in the U.S. For, in terms of REIT investments. Uh, that's our retail REITs. Now, when you're considering a retail REIT, you must consider uh, they invest in shopping malls and you have to wonder uh, the performance in the future of shopping malls since everyone's going online. So please take that in, into consideration. Uh, the second one is the residential REIT the large apartment REIT, the mixed use REIT, and um, this, this one is the one that I am most invested into. And what I pay attention to are two things. Um, number one is the uh, population, the demographics, all right, the movement of people, and secondly, the jobs, okay? That's what I take consideration um, when, when investing in this side, uh, investing in this sector. Um, next is the office REIT where you invest in, where they invest in office buildings. The thing to consider there is office building investments tends to go with the economy. So if this is the economy, this is the office performance. So they kind of lag each other that way, okay? So pay attention to where we are in the cycle when investing in office REITs. Um, next is the healthcare REIT, where they invest in hospitals, uh, nursing facilities, uh, uh, medical office centers and re retirement facilities, all right? A very healthy sector and probably uh, will uh, maintain its uh, vibrancy for years to come considering the, uh, the, the baby boomer demographics. And lastly, number five, we have the mortgage REITs and it comprises 10% of the overall uh, investment in REITs in the U.S. Now, mortgage REITs are very simple. They invest in mortgages. They, they make money off of the interest uh, on, on the money they lend out. Okay. All right. Now let's jump into how to invest in REITs. All right. Number one, um, where do you go? Well, uh, most of the big REITs, especially these top five, they are publicly listed. So we have basically uh, uh, three types of REITs to consider. We have the REIT that's publicly um, listed, or you have a REIT that's public but not listed, or you have a REIT that's just completely private. Okay, so you have those three. But for the most part, if you're looking to invest in a REIT, you would go to wherever you buy your stocks, right? Uh, to if you wanted to do uh, general REIT, uh, uh, um, uh, general REIT uh, research, you would go to. Uh, REIT.com, so R-E-I-T.com. You can also go to Dividend.com, and there's other uh, websites you can go. Just Google um, uh, REITs, and then it takes you to a, a many uh, different websites, all right? So go through Stock Exchange, 
Now, when looking for a particular REIT to invest in, here are just a few tips to consider okay, on choosing the right REIT uh, for you. Um, look for REITs where historically they show the, uh, the dividend yields and the uh, capital, the long-term capital appreciation. So look at those two things. So a good REIT um, has uh, decent okay, dividend yields and decent long-term cap capital appreciation. Look for that. Look for those two, two performance factors. Okay, number three, uh, whatever REIT you choose, make sure it has strong management with boatloads of experience. All right? That's what Warren Buffett does, and that's what you, sh you should do as well. Number four, um, quality matters. Okay, quality matters here. Only invest in REITs with quality commercial real estate buildings and quality tenants. Again, this is a Warren Buffett thing, all right? So only invest in REITs with quality real estate, the actual properties, and the quality and quality tenants. Okay, and lastly, um, uh, look for uh, REITs that, um, uh, that have economic strongholds. And what I mean by that is, would you rather invest in a uh, REIT in Washington, D.C. with a holdings of average office buildings, or would you rather, rather invest in a REIT with a holding of uh, A-plus uh, office buildings in Detroit? Okay, so average buildings in Washington, D.C., okay, big economy, uh, big city, powerhouse economy, or would you rather go to Detroit and invest in nice properties there? Uh, easily the answer is average buildings in Washington, D.C. because they have the economic stronghold. Okay, So it's a, it will be a safer investment to make. All right, so hopefully now you can see the most common REITs and how to invest. Um, now what I'd like to jump into is what are the benefits to investing in a REIT and what are the disadvantages? I'll see you there next. Now, let's jump into the benefits of investing in REITs as well as the disadvantages of investing in REITs. Let's start with benefits. So benefit number one is, since REITs have to uh, pay out 90% of its income back to shareholders, we're hopeful that that equals uh, higher dividends you know, compared to the rest of the stock market. Uh, number two, uh, inco the, the, uh, your income could be secured uh, by long-term leases. For example, if you have, if you invest in a REIT that invests in shopping centers and uh, there's an anchor tenant in that shopping center, most likely that tenant has a long-term 15, 20 year lease that you get the benefit from. So that equals uh, your income secured by long-term leases. So hopefully that will correlate to stable and secure income for a long time. Number three, liquidity. Since, um, uh, a, a lot of the major uh, REITs are publicly traded stocks. Uh, you can buy and sell at will. Okay, so that makes it a uh, very, uh, very liquid investment. Number four, um, can you imagine going out yourself and buying a huge shopping center and managing the whole thing yourself? No, you can't, right? So that's one of the benefits of investing in a REIT because a REIT will only hire highly skilled and professional property managers to look over the investment. Okay, something that you probably don't have the skill. Uh, number five, transparency. So the major REITs are registered uh, uh, through the uh, SEC, the Security Exchange Commission, and they have to provide periodic disclosures to that government agency that they are performing well. And because of that, there's extra transparency. That's a benefit for you. All right, okay, so those are the five wonderful benefits. Let's talk about the uh, a certain uh, disadvantages of investing in REITs. Number one is lack of diversification. Now, imagine yourself buying a, uh, a shopping center uh, REIT, okay, investing in one, and the shopping center sector uh, does not do well. Okay, that means that your stock is not going to do well either. All right. So, and and don't forget REITs. Uh, if you buy a shopping center REITs, they only do shopping centers. All right. That's all they do is shopping centers. If you buy a healthcare REIT, 
they only do hospitals and medical centers, right? So if one of, two, one of those two sectors are not performing well, then your stock is not performing well. So it, you could suffer from uh, this lack of diversification, okay? Number two, slow growth. Remember that REITs have to pay out 90% of their income. That means they only have 10% of that left to reinvest into their core product line. So the growth can be slowed because of that restriction, right? Number three and number four, probably the most important ones, tax treatment. Now, when you invest in a REIT and it pays you out in dividends, you are paying those dividends as if it's personal income, like your job income. So wherever you are in the tax rate is what taxes you're gonna pay on your dividend. So if you are a high paid person investing in a REIT, guess what? You're gonna be paying a lot of taxes, okay, on your dividends. So that can, that can be a big disadvantage. Uh, fourth, this is uh, near and dear to my heart, this is one of the big disadvantages. Uh, losses, okay, the passive losses do not pass to investors. One of the big, biggest reasons to invest in commercial estate is because of all the wonderful tax benefits. And probably the most wonderful one is we get to experience all the losses. We get to write off everything, incredible write-offs. But guess what? In a REIT, those write-offs are trapped into the REIT. So you don't get to experience that, all right? To me, that's a huge disadvantage, all right? So now you got to see the five uh, wonderful benefits and the four um, disadvantages, I'd like to finish up by sharing with you, by answering the question, is it better to do my own investing rather than invest in a REIT? Okay, let's go and finish up there. All right, let's finish up here by asking the question and answering it, is it better to do my own investing? That's a great question. All right. Let's look at it from, from, uh, from their REIT point of view, right? So if you were to invest in a REIT, um, you would have no landlord responsibilities. They'll do everything for you. Buy the property, they finance it, they do all the management, and they send you the check, they do all the accounting. Everything is done for you at that point if you were to invest in a REIT. Uh, also, uh, when you invest in a REIT, your investment is liquid, meaning that if you don't like something, you can always share, sell your shares and get your money back. Okay, piece of cake. Uh, number three, the dividend, a dividend is paid out, right, on a periodic basis with the REIT, with no work from you. If you were to purchase your own commercial property, you would have to do some work to, uh, to get the cash flow out, all right, to get paid. But um, uh, with the REIT, no, they just send you a dividend and that's it, all right. So those are, so if, if, you, if this is you, this is you. Now. If you want to invest yourself, so you do the investing, here's what you have to, to look forward to and, and experience. Uh, number one, you're going to have control. So if you want to fire the management, if you want to uh, increase your cash flow, if you want to reduce expenses, if you want to refinance, you know, what have you, sell, you can do that, okay? You can do that. In your REIT, you have no control because you are not on the management team. You're just a shareholder. But if you do it yourself, you, you have complete control of that. Number two, I believe you can get greater cash flow uh, by investing yourself, but also uh, what's probably just as important, you get all the tax benefits that you wouldn't get in a, in a REIT. For example, all the tax write-offs, including uh, depreciation, which is huge in our business, you would be able to take advantage of that if you did your own investing. Uh, leverage, right? Leverage is a benefit to doing your own investing. Let's say you, that you had uh, uh, $100,000 to invest and you invested in a REIT, right? So that means you put $100,000 into your REIT, you would get $100,000 worth of shares, okay? And now, if you were to do your own investing, you could leverage that $100,000 to, to buying a large property by getting a mortgage on it, right? So if you put down a... Um, if you have $100,000, you can pretty much buy a four to $500,000 property, a small apartment building that's a small um, commercial store, for example, that will cash flow and that you could own yourself. So you can leverage that into something greater, okay? Uh, number four, um, you could, if you did this, if you invested yourself, 
you could syndicate or you can create your personal REIT. Okay? Syndication is, is um, uh, pulling other people's money together, um, the money that you don't have, in order to buy a large piece of real estate or a pool of real estate. Okay? So you will pull money together to buy something that you couldn't buy yourself. That's called syndication. And it's pretty much creating your personal REIT. In fact, I have a video that's going to appear on the screen here of how to do real estate syndication and what the wonderful benefits are. Okay? Many of our students do syndication full time um, as, a, as an occupation, very successful at it. All right, okay, so um, that's, that's the question. I hope I help you uh, uh, create an answer. Is it better to uh, do your own investing rather than invest in your REIT? Thanks for watching this video today on Real Estate Investing Trust, uh, Real Estate uh, Investment Trust for Dummies. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.